Good afternoon and welcome to the Weather Gurus podcast. I'm your host, Tony. Thank you for joining me today on this August 18th, 2020. Today, I want to talk about the Grand Solar Minimum. And this is going to be a two-part series in which we examine the effects of the Grand Solar Minimum um, and its effect on climatology and meteorology for the United States. As you know, uh, the Grand Solar Minimum was expected in 2019 and 2020 by NASA. It was predicted back in 2017. We are in, the sun has a period of an 11 year cycle called a solar minimum. And it's nothing to be afraid of, but it's something to definitely be aware of because it affects our weather cycles here in the United States of America. So this 11 year cycle is based on the solar cycle, is based on the sun's magnetic field with its north and south magnetic poles switching places. And it doesn't we don't know what drives these cycles, but recent research suggests that has to do with a, an eleven year planetary alignment. And so the poles switch when the magnetic field is at its weakest knows that known as the solar minimum. So as a result of this grand solar minimum, we can expect more catastrophic events, climatology such as floods, fires, tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, etc., as the polarity of the Earth is switched. And just this past few weeks, I just want to go over some articles here that I'm sure you've seen too, and events that you've seen. But first of all, in agriculture, we've seen Iowa. In the Des Moines, Iowa, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, uh, Marshalltown, Iowa, in the Midwest, Des Moines Register, this was in the newspaper today, Iowa estimates that a derecho damage to homes, farms will be closer to $4 billion. And now first, this is the Weather Channel, so let me explain to you what a derecho is. A derecho is a basically a large cluster of thunderstorms, severe thunderstorms if you will, with winds ranging anywhere between 60 miles an hour to sometimes up to 100 miles an hour and greater. And not only is it just a cluster of thunderstorms, these thunderstorms stretch for miles across state lines. So it can be a derecho can be a line 200 miles or more in length, latitudinally, longitudinally, excuse me, in length, crossing state lines, as I said, that lasts for hours at a time. So that's what a derecho is, and meteorologically speaking. Now, this is the damage that it does. So the one in Iowa, it was had winds equivalent of a category two hurricane maximum sustained gusts were 112 miles an hour in parts of des moines cedar rapids waterloo etc and so as a result there was four billion dollars of damage to crops mostly corn crops it damaged uh soybean and damaged the grain silo bins that hold these crop yields so you can imagine this is just one year of the grand solar minimum and this 11 year cycle okay so also, we've had California wildfires sp- spawning fire tornadoes. That's tornadoes of fire, um, equivalent to an EF3 tornado on the enhanced Fujita scale. So the large wildfires can heat the air so much that huge clouds develop and strong winds, and these winds can begin to rotate and sometimes produce a tornado or a fire tornado. And so that prompted the California state fire officials to issue a warning to people two days ago. And this is just some of the more things. Also, as a result of this increased grand solar minimum, we have to talk about the above average hurricane season that we are expecting. As you know, so far this year, we've had over 10 storms, named storms already. And already we've had two hurricanes already. And so NOAA, Climate Prediction Center, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Inf- uh, Administration, they predict a 60% chance of an above normal season, a 30% chance of a near normal season, and a 10% chance of a below normal season. Now remember, the Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1st through November the 30th. So there's plenty of time in that time frame to extend this list. Already we're past Tropical Storm Josephine and Tropical Storm Cal, and now the next on the list will be L on our list here, which will be Laura. Laura, L as in Lima, Laura is the next name on the Atlantic hurricane season list. And it's not just the Atlantic hurricane season that's busy. The Pacific hurricane season is also busy as we have Hurricane Genevieve out there, which is a major Category 4 hurricane out there right now with winds of over 135 miles an hour sustained and higher gusts. But back to the Atlantic tropical hurricane season. 
If we exhaust all of these names by the end of September, we'll be using the Greek alphabet, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, etc. And names that get retired off the list are names that cause either extensive monetary damage or extensive loss of life. And they are retired. So the World Meteorological Organization issues these lists of names that we use and they're rotated every five years. And of course, the names that are retired are the ones that... Um, like I said, cause damage or extreme loss of life, never to be used again. The World Meteorological Organization is based in Geneva, Switzerland, I believe. Now, if we get to the Greek alphabet, like I said, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, those names can be reused again because, you know, they're names that we have, generic names. And so the names won't be retired, but we can definitely use the Greek alphabet names again. There's 24 letters in the Greek alphabet, so we shouldn't run out of those. But this goes to show you that because of the grand solar minimum, it is vital that we get prepared. We get emergency preparedness plans in place. That means we need to have extra food, water, clothes, durable clothes, um, things if the power goes out. Because the power can go out even in a tropical storm with wind sustained at 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour or greater. Because a tree could fall down, as we've seen with um, when we had the tropical storm that made the arrival in the Carolinas a couple of weeks ago. I believe we had, I believe it was, um, sorry, it was Isaias that made landfall in the Carolinas as a Category 1 minimum hurricane. As you can see, people in Connecticut were out of power for two or three weeks. People in the Northeast and other states and New Jersey were out of power as trees that have been uprooted from the winds and the rain. And so it does not necessarily take a major hurricane to cause extensive damage to any of these areas. As you can see in Iowa, just took a derecho, a long, severe thunderstorm of winds, a downburst, a microburst. It could be any one of these things. But the point to remember is that as we get through this grand solar minimum that we are now, these next 11 years, we're going to see increased hurricanes, increased fires, increased earthquakes in places that never had plate shift movement, such as Puerto Rico. I mean, they've had plate shift movement. There's an eye on the plate, excuse me. But they've never had this increase in tents so, so shallow of an earthquake. We know California is expecting the big one. That can happen in the next 10 years. Uh, states that never get it, maybe even the East Coast, like Washington, D.C. and Carolinas, and in Boston will experience earthquakes, extreme heat. Death Valley recorded its highest temperature ever this week at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, other states broke the record. Phoenix, Arizona broke in a daily record with 116 degrees yesterday on August 16th, or Monday on August 16th, or mon seven, Monday on August 17th. We've had record breaking heat, we've had record breaking drought, we've had record breaking floods happen. In South Texas, as a result, when Hurricane Hannah made landfall in Corpus Christi and Brownsville or McAllen in the Mexican uh, Rio Grande area south of there that was flooding. So this grand solar minimum is something to take serious. And as a result, one of the greatest fears that I have is that we get a solar flare and power goes out or an EMP and power goes out as a result of this weather phenomenon. And we're unable to meet the power demands because of a heating up. The earth is still heating up one degree Celsius every year. And ocean temperatures are rising one degree Celsius every year. And so because of which we can expect increased hurricanes, increased flooding, and increased tropical activity, even with thunderstorms are becoming stronger. I was I was um, flying a plane and even the turbulence is stronger. The jet stream is stronger. The polar jet, the subtropical jet, all of these jet streams are stronger. And the, the whole pattern of a ridge in the Midwest and a trough in the East is getting stronger and more pronounced. And so this signals to me that the grand solar minimum is in effect, that it's overriding even the moon's tide cycles in some of these oceans. And we can expect a much more above average activity. And that's been predicted by NOAA and NASA combined. And I concur with their prediction. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you think about the grand solar minimum and how it's affected your daily life. As far as seeing this increased activity and causing you to move and shuffle your life around because of the increased activity that we'll be seeing in not only the United States, but worldwide. Um, matter of fact, there was flooding in England, there was flooding in Japan, there was flooding in China these past three weeks. Life-threatening flooding, okay? They've never gotten 20 inches of rain in a day period, a two-day period before in some of these places in China, Japan, and England. But this is happening because we're in the grand solar minimum. Let me know in the comments. I'd be very curious to know what places you've been where you've experienced the effect of a grand solar minimum. This is...
Tony signing out for the Weather Guru 101. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you tell those you know to listen. And we'll be so grateful. I'll see you next episode.